Kaziba, a woman member of parliament for Vuma district and the shadow minister for fisheries in the alternative government. You're all welcome to this press briefing. As you are all aware of what is happening in the fisheries sector, so many, we are having so many gaps and yet we are having so many livelihoods that they are depending on the fisheries sector. And as us as members of parliament, we have several raised uh, on the floor of parliament issues concerning the fishermen, the fisheries sector in the parliament of Uganda, and the, also my colleagues, all members at least have showed concern on the floor of parliament. But the government has, the government is not, the government is giving little attention to our people, and yet they sent us here to parliament to represent them. Us as members of parliament, we passed the Fisheries and Aquaculture Bill 2022 that was assented to by the president uh, in February 2023, and it became an act. But, and you know how much time is being used in processing these bills. And after parliament passing the, 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 after parliament passing the law, it is upon, it's incumbent on the minister, on the line minister to table the regulations that can be discussed by parliament and be passed. Uh, but it's now coming to one and a half years since the president assented to the bill and, not, and the minister has failed to table the regulations. We have seen that due to lack of the operation law or to actualize the law, we have had issues of the human rights violations, we have had arrests, we have had illegal detentions, where even people have lost properties, people have lost lives. And uh, earlier this year, in February, we, we, the Minister of State for Fisheries Adora Helen made a media statement where she banned silver fish using the hurry up method and without 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 consulting the fishermen in that line and introduced a new method called chota chota and these people had tried their level best they were trying to cope up with the new method uh, that was introduced to them by the minister and then last week here comes the FPU commander uh, Madam Masse, uh, where she uh, where she where she lifted the ban for a two to four days, and he told the told the silver fish fishermen to do to do the fishing using the same method which the minister had banned. Now, all these that uh, all these statements, all, all these directives which are being given to our fishermen, they are short-lived remedies to the problems that are affecting our people in the fishery sector, and us as members of parliament. We are not against any fishermen, not, even, not like we are even against the silver fish fishermen. But our concern is we want to know where is the minister, in which law is the minister giving, giving these directives, or under what law is the FPO commander, Madam Massey, giving these directives. Because as parliament, it is parliament, it is the minister to table the regulations, it is the, the regulations that should actualize the law, and after Parliament passing passing the regulations, we have to. They will be determining on the method that has to be that has to be used, or the fishing gears have to be used. Now we don't know where these people are getting the authority. Where are they getting the authority to make all these contradictory contradictory directives? We are even optimistic that now, after the silver fish fishermen, they will come to the narrow patch fishermen and cause the same chaos and cause the same and be and be disruptive as it is. Um, for us, as members of parliament, the, the the directives of the minister and the directive of the of uh, of left hand Colonel Massey, it's like that to uh, have that name. It's like they're trying to show us that the fishermen have to operate on their masses. That today someone will come with another directive, another one will come with another directive because they're having their own personal interests in the fisheries sector. For us, we are not going to allow that because these directives are really disrupting our fishermen in that they are causing more threats. You see, the fishermen of silver fish and the fishermen of Nairo Pash, they are now beefing one another. They have reached to the extent of saying, if you find you in the lake, we are going to kill you. Even the other are saying, if you find you in the lake, we are going to, call, to kill you. So we don't want chaos in that manner. Long ago, something like 15 years back or 20 years back, the fishermen of Nairo Pash and the fishermen of Silver Fish, they used to cooperate because one, they are fishing on the same lake and they could not have any issues around with them because they used to have their own 
local methods of fishing that they had adopted. Now, when these directives come, when even they are not under the law, there is no law that we are practicing here. They are causing more threats to the business and actually more people are even going to run out of the business. It's like the government wants the fishermen to run more to, to, to be more poor, because you cannot divert people from this to another directive. We want the minister to table the regulations, because we must operate in the law. We took a lot of time to pass the Fisheries and Aquaculture Bill. Then the other thing is that uh, if these regulations are in place, I don't think we are going to have any issues because the fishermen will be knowing the method to be used. And also the silver fish, the, both, both categories on the lake, all will be knowing when the method to be used and also the gears that will be used. This business of giving people opportunity that two days you can fish, four days you can fish, it, fishermen are supposed to fish any time they want as long as they are complying to the rules or to the guidelines that were given in the law by the minister. Let the minister table the regulations to guide us. We, we want our fishermen, both silverfish and aeropash, to fish any time they want, but following the guidelines. The moment we start the things of giving directives, we are going to lose out as fishermen, we are going to lose the lake, because we are here to protect the lake, both the lake and our fishermen. Now, us as members of parliament, our demand is the minister to table the regulations within one week. If the minister does not table the regulations, we are going to mobilize our fishermen from different fishing communities to fight for their rights. We want the minister to table the regulations within one week. Then the other thing is that we shall be visiting the landing sites as members of as members of parliament from the different fishing communities to, so, to see what can be done and to also uh, engage with other fishermen to also fight for their rights and also fight for our rights because most of us here, we are all fishermen. And other matters we may not be privileged to tell you now, which explains that melodrama. We cannot allow this process to continue. In the interest of the people of Uganda, yes, Ugandans, we are stuck with the garbage. We want a dump site today, actually yesterday. But we must guard against plunder, which is likely to happen out of this crisis. The melodrama you are witnessing there is rooted in this. Partially, I will explain the second directive one of the issues, one of the explanation of that melodrama. Now, we expect all the councillors, all the mayors, all the leaders to abide by this directive. All of them. I do not expect any of the councillors, any of the city leaders vetoing this decision halting the process of procuring land until we investigate this matter, we get a report, and in a council sitting, well organized, with the sobriety, modicum of civility, and the decorum, we present this report, the damning report, on whatever is happening behind the scenes and we take an appropriate decision in the interest of the people of Uganda. This is the directive we wanted to communicate today, one of the directives. That is one. We wanted to present this to council yesterday, including other information we have shared for the time being. And at some stage, it's going to come out. To share this with colleagues and present, the Honorable Sebuf will explain to you the details of what explains all those efforts to thwart the process of coming up with this pronouncement. Little wonder, I don't know whether you are surprised why the guns are not turned against any of the people in the management, but uh, they are turned against my team here. <laughs> Isn't it shocking? 
I don't know how many of you love football. In soccer, when you see a player tackling, tackling the opponent who has no ball, not actually an opponent, tackling a colleague, not actually an opponent, a player tackling a colleague, who has no ball, you know there is a reason. You should be inquisitive. Why? Why are they tackling? Say, woof. You saw what happened. You have all this on camera. Why tackles? Was Sebuf, is Sebuf the one who is the accounting officer? Is Sebuf the one who is uh, even handling all this? But the one who is overseeing, the overseer, is the one who is getting the boot. Not even on the leg, but on the head. But poo, the overseer. So if somebody hits the guard, who guards your home, you have to check yourself. So we put there a guard to ensure that all the processes are handled transparently. Now the guard is the one receiving the barrage of attacks. Meanwhile, people want to go away with the loot. We have said no. We have stopped the process. Good enough, we have assured you once the report is given to us, we shall get the whole of it. And we are assuring you this time around, we shall not even study it to make a recommendation. We shall act as a conveyor belt. Just as a conveyor belt, once this report is given to us, how the processes are being handled, as a conveyor belt, to cancel for consideration. And then we see anybody raising Katemba, we deal with them. The second directive is contained in this communication. We have told you, we have told you, this may not necessarily be a directive, but you'll understand what it is. This is contained in the instrument which I've also signed today, the 18th of September. This is addressed to the Inspectorate of Government, the IEG. We sometimes call that office IGG. Previously, that was the nomenclature. But after amendment, they changed it to Inspectorate of Government instead of Inspector General of Government. So, now this is the IG report on Chite's West Slide Tragedy. The detailed instrument. Nearly all the recent reports of the Inspectorate of Government have ranked KCCA amongst the most corrupt local government authorities in the country and the third most corrupt entity in the country. You will recall that on the 25th D of April 2022, we asked you and the other senior officers from the Inspectorate of Government and had an intense engagement over the aforesaid enigmatic challenge in the institution. We presented to the team a trackload of dossiers concerning a number of dubious and the illicit dealings that have dogged down the transformation agenda of the city. It has bogged down, rather. It has not dodged. It has bogged down the transformation agenda of the city. <coughs> Dumb struck by the revelations therein, you undertook to set up a special investigation unit to specifically deal with the corruption in the KCCA. We have persistently made an impassioned call for your office to honor this commitment, but to no avail. In the wake of the Chitez garbage slide tragedy, which occurred on 10th August 2024, and claimed over 50 innocent lives, the, inspector, the inspectorate swung into action to investigate the KCCA 
uh, uh, to investigate rather the cause of the Castras trophy and bring to book the culpable individuals within and outside the KCCA. Indeed, the statements were recorded from senior management and staff of KCCA, as well as other stakeholders and whistleblowers. On the 22nd day of August 2024, a team of investigators from your office had a lengthy discussion with the office of the Lord Mayor, which lasted for over four hours. Cogent evidence implicating some members of the technical team was furnished to you. Specifically with regards to misappropriation and squandering of the Uganda shillings 4.1 billion uh, annual allocation towards the maintenance of Chitez dump site and the criminal negligence. The office of the Lord Mayor demanded for an immediate action by way of interdiction of particular individuals within the cases here to pave way for smooth and effective investigations. Your team, however, expressed mixed feelings about that action and assured the office of the Lord Mayor that the report would be released within a week's time. This is day four, number one, to reject our disillusionment at the inordinate delay by the Office of the Inspector General to dispose of this matter of grave concern to not only Ugandans, but the entire world. We are getting more concerned about the efficacy of this process and the possible outcome considering the unfolding events within KCCA, where voices are now coming through to castigate the State Executive Committee for having submitted that damning evidence to the Inspectorate government. We are concerned. Why are members castigating us for having submitted this evidence? Does it, doesn't it ring a bell to you? Why? I have submitted evidence to the IGG to investigate. And then you ask, why did you take this evidence to the IGG? What is your interest, if I may ask you, if you don't want this evidence to be presented before the IGG? What is your interest? What's wrong with presenting it? Whether action is taken or not, what's wrong? Because we know the problems with that office. But it's our duty as leaders. Now, now therefore, our call to the office of the IG, the Inspector General, number one, expedite the process of releasing the long-awaited report regarding the Chitez West Slide tragedy. This is our demand, number one. The IGG, OIG, should expedite the process of releasing this report. This is the instrument we have issued to us. Two, forthwith, cause interdiction of particular officers under investigation, as earlier requested by the office of the Lord Mayor, lest they are continuing to stay in office and the machinations will obstruct the investigation process. By copy of this letter, Parliament is hereby requested to first track the investigations being conducted by the Committee of Statutory Authorities and State Enterprises, COSASE, and make a final verdict or pronouncement over the matter as soon as practicable. Look at the situation we are in as SEC members. You ask the progress report for procurement of land for purposes of establishing an alternative solid waste management facility. That progress report is not given to you. You ask for the report of the IGG investigating all these matters, this catastrophe of unprecedented magnitude in the sector of solid waste management. The IGG is quiet. The matter goes to Parliament. Kosas embarks on the process of investigation. They are taking their time, not in a hurry. Then you get a hammer, a sledge and a hammer, to eat the frontline soldiers here who are pushing for these reports to be produced. 
we ask you okolerani what is your interest in hammering the frontline soldiers fighting pushing for the release of these very important reports okolerani why not join us in demanding for the IGG report if they say the IGG gave us a report and it was never presented to council we shall be held liable why not join us in demanding for the progress report in the acquisition of land if it was furnished to us then you tell us that why are you sitting on the report why don't you join us in demanding for the report from parliament for heaven's sake now what is it that is causing all this melodrama I invite my colleague here to brief you. I, I thank, thank you very much.